You probably heard warnings about mercury levels in fish. The pollutants in our air and water. The planet Earth and hidden dangers that exist just about anywhere we go. They're found in almost everything we eat, everything we drink, in the air. But what exactly are those toxins doing to our health? It really makes you stop and think, what's this all about? What exactly are all these toxins you hear about? What are they doing to your health? Toxic compounds, toxins, are ubiquitous in the environment. These are herbicides, pesticides, volatile organic compounds, heavy metals, they're everywhere. Chemical companies are creating thousands of new chemicals every year that have been untested. More kids with childhood lymphoma, more kids with brain tumors, more adults with cancer. These chemicals are coming into our life and these toxins and heavy metals are coming into our lives and what do we do? The world is a toxic place. We know that every five years, 10,000 new chemicals are in the marketplace that weren't here five years ago. There is no such thing as a pristine environment. It's, toxins are in the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the food we eat. So if you decide to actually breathe today, you're going to be exposed to toxins especially volatile organic compounds. If you decide to drink the water, you're going to be exposed to heavy metals. And if you decide to eat food anytime soon, well, you're going to get toxins there as well, especially in processed food or food that's been chemically altered. There's a tipping point in your body above which the accumulation of these toxins begins to interpret into disease. Our intake of toxins is much greater than our ability to excrete and the difference becomes sequestered toxins, our body burden. The fact is, is the body burden of toxins today is a body burden that is significantly higher than the body burden was 20 years ago, 40 years ago, 60 years ago. So we don't die from pneumococcal pneumonia anymore. We have penicillin and its derivatives, but we die more kids with childhood lymphoma, more kids with brain tumors, more adults with cancer. All of these diseases appear to be related to these toxin, toxic exposures. To turn your back on that is to turn your back on the obvious. The study that was conducted by the Environmental Working Group in cooperation with the American Red Cross looked at umbilical cord blood from newborns. And they found, on average, over 200 toxic industrial compounds in the umbilical cord blood of newborns. Over 70 of those compounds were potentially carcinogenic or cancer-causing. We take a look at things like lead. Uh, for example, lead and mercury fall into what we call a group of neurotoxins. They've been involved and implicated in learning disabilities like ADD and ADHD. Mercury has been implicated in autism. Lead has been implicated in autism as well. The Environmental Protection Agency sets limits for certain amounts of heavy metals and organic compounds that are allowed in the water because they look at each one of those compounds separately. They'll say this amount of mercury is safe or this amount of lead is safe. But the fact is the whole is much greater than the sum of the parts. If you take what is normally a, say, 1% concentration of, uh, of lead, which normally would not hurt a rat, and introduce another 1% concentration of mercury, which normally would not hurt a rat by itself, but you introduce them together, that will now kill the rat. We already know that we're exposing toxins to our unborn children through the umbilical cord blood, but even after they're born, you're breastfeeding and you're exposing the child to toxins from the breast milk. We know that breast milk readily expresses benzene, dioxin, furans, dioxane, uh, and other volatile organic compounds. And these are in refrigerant breakdown products, they're in, uh, they're in petroleum based products, they're in pesticides, herbicides, and you're being exposed to these on a daily basis because you clean your house, you use bleach, you use detergents, you use hairspray, and these are things that are ubiquitous. They're all around us, and those things that you're using in and around your house, you're feeding to your child. It's being expressed right through your breast milk. So, if you are a pregnant or nursing mother, 
it's not just important to avoid these toxins and to be aware of them, it is incumbent upon you to do something to actively detoxify, to lower your own body burden and therefore lower the risk to your child. How it affects adults, how these toxins in the blood affect adults, probably the most identifiable thing is development of high blood pressure, development of kidney failure, development of Alzheimer's disease, development of various cancers and immune deficiencies. It affects our, our metabolic systems, it affects our endocrine systems, it can cause things like chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, autoimmune diseases have been linked to toxins. These are the exposures that are part of the what we call invisible killers. Yeah, we don't see them. You know, it's real easy to take care of somebody in Japan when they spilled all that mercury and people ate the fish. The people that got acutely ill ran high temperatures, dropped their blood pressures, required life support, they were easy to identify. The people who developed Alzheimer's earlier than they should have, that's the invisible group. We don't see that group. They just become a statistic that we talk about later. Toxins don't know anything about political or national boundaries. They go wherever the wet air flows, wherever the water flows, anywhere that is accessible, and that's anywhere on the planet. Right now, there's over 1,400 metric tons of particular toxins traveling in the jet stream. Right now, 1,450 some metric tons. It's everywhere. Welcome to our world. We're continually being bombarded by the media with the vast amount of toxic compounds that are in our world today and continuing to be produced in ever-increasing volumes. The challenge for us is that so many of us tune in and then tune out because we do not feel like we have a solution. Several years ago, if you brought up these facts about environmental toxins and exposure and things like that, they'd think that you were either a hippie or that you were just a, you know, a tree hugger, they would call you, anti-industry, anti-business. But there's a paradigm shift occurring. There is a global change where everybody is going greener. They want to protect the environment. They want to do things for the future. And that includes detoxifying yourself and removing these toxins from your own environment. We need to clean up us. That benefits not only us immediately, but the next generation. I can't control the rest of the world, but I can control myself, and that's where it starts, right here with me. We can basically just say, uh-uh, I'm not going there, I'm going to get that stuff out, and that's what I'm excited about. As a doctor, I'm seeing people coming into me that want to learn, that want to take action, want to be part of this movement of getting healthier. People all over the country and the world are getting involved. If we can detoxify women and men in the childbearing age range, then they give birth to a generation that starts at a lower level than they started at. We can turn back the clock. That's a big deal. We can make a difference. Since I took action some years ago, not only do I feel better, I'm a lot healthier. That's the excitement of this all. Think about the fact that we can change the next generation. We can make the world truly a better place for them. That's what's exciting. This is not just an attitude. This is a lifestyle. I want to keep my body healthy, take care of me. This is something that everybody needs to get involved with. That's the big movement now. This is really the bandwagon now. And we need to hop on that bandwagon. We need to learn what's going on, how we're reducing these toxins in the environment, how we're becoming more social citizens of the world and lowering the toxic burdens out there, and how we can do our part to join in this global paradigm change.